throughout Europe, tens of thousands of Jews rose up to fight against the evil that had ensnared Europe. We now turn our attention to the story of Hugo Lowy and one act of spiritual resistance that took place only a few meters away from where we now stand, near the boxcar, on the spot to where so many Jews from all over Europe were forcibly transported, never to return. His exceptional story of spiritual hero heroism only came to light in recent years through a chance encounter, as you will see in the following video. In the last year of the war, more than 400,000 Hungarian Jews were marched to their death in Birkenau. Each and every one had a story, but their stories went with them to the gas chambers. Some 50 years later, one of these stories has miraculously come to light. Hugo Lowy is a story of a hero who was ready to sacrifice his life for his faith, for Judaism. Hugo Lowy was an ordinary husband and father. A modest but devout Jew, he prayed every morning. Like many, he worried about protecting his family from the Holocaust engulfing Europe. As whole families began to disappear, Hugo moved his wife and children from their hometown on the Slovakian border to the relative safety of Budapest. But their fragile world crumbled in March 1944 when the Nazis invaded. And the fear that gripped all of us of what's going to happen to us was uh, kind of indescribable. It was all eternal. Nobody screamed or cried, but the fear of what's going to happen to us. The next day, Hugo went alone to the Budapest train station, hoping to find a way to get his family out. He was never seen again. Against the odds, Hugo's wife and children survived. In the months after liberation, they searched for him, but found nothing. It invaded the space of my mother's sorrow. And she was a gentle soul. She very rarely smiled. Hugo's wife died, never knowing what had befallen her husband. Then in 1991, a chance meeting on the other side of the world brought a witness. Maya Lowy was no relation. But like Hugo, he'd gone to the Budapest train station on March 20, 1944. The two had been caught in a Nazi trap and taken to an internment camp outside the city. My father told me that Hugo was uh, was kind of a leader. He was an, a real inspiration to the people that were there. He conducted the uh, prayer services, and so he encouraged everybody to, uh, to pray. Hugo's faith sustained them as they were herded into wagons without food or water, the first transport of Hungarian Jews to the death camps. My father and Hugo were together. They get grabbed and thrown out onto the platform. And they were ordered to uh, take their belongings, to drop it at the station there. Everybody did, and he didn't. Hugo held onto his bag, and uh, an SS guard grabbed it from him and threw it on the pile. When the guard turned around, my father picked it up and brought it back. There were all these people who were looking up to him, and they were warning him. And, 
and my father also said to him, don't do it, just leave it, just leave the bag, just leave it. And my father told me that Hugo said, I'm not going anywhere without my prayer shawl and my tefillin. And then he knew, he had to have known what the outcome would be. And then they beat him to death there and then. And the rest moved on. This was his life, the tradition, the heritage, the faith. He's belonging to the community of the Jewish nation. Was concentrated in those tefillin, in this bank. This makes him even more a model of Kiddush Hashem, sanctification of God. Almost half a million Hungarian lives were erased from history under these grey skies. But it would take many years to find a monument to help mark this tragedy. An original wartime wagon, restored by Hugo's family, and returned here in a private ceremony. It is filled with the memories of all those it brought to this dark place and something more. Today we are going to return back the talents and svillin of his son. The Nazis didn't declare only a genocide against the Jewish people. They declared a war against the spirit as well. Hugo, Louis, in his brave last step, he overcame. 